Now let's take a step back and walk you through what it takes to implement quality of service in real world. So this is based on my experience as an engineer in the industry. When I'm talking to my customers, this is my approach of collecting all the data points to be able to figure out how we're going to deploy quality of service. So the first thing you would want to do is gather customer requirements and identify types of traffic that they have in their network. The next thing you do after we have identified the traffic is divide that traffic into different type of classes, specifying if it's voice, mission critical, best effort, so on and so forth. And finally, in step three, you define your QoS policy for each class. So you may say voice gets the highest priority mission critical gets the next level priority after voice and best effort you could care less because it's mostly tcp based web surfing and all that if it gets dropped that's okay it can always be retransmitted now let me zoom into each step to give you a more deeper understanding of what i mean so step one is customer requirements and traffic type so here the first step is we gather business requirements so we identify business critical applications. So we ask the business, we audit the business, right? We go and talk to different business stakeholders and we go, hey, what are the key business applications you run in your network? So the customer might say, I have email, I have SAP or Oracle, and I've got these different storage systems and all that. And that helps you then create your quality of service policy. And the next thing you do is you also gather network requirements. So you identify various types of traffic on the network, traffic like voice over IP, traffic like video, traffic like database, and video surveillance, for example. And then after you have all those data points that you have gathered from your business and network audit and interviews, you then use that information to define service levels for these different applications and traffic types. And that leads to step number two, which is you divide that traffic into different classes. So the email traffic will get the best effort type of mapping. The application traffic may get the transactional level, which is a guaranteed delivery. The e-commerce and web browsing, because that might be critical to your business, will get guaranteed delivery as well and you'll classify it as mission critical traffic, whereas voice would be considered low latency, super mission critical, and you'll put that in the low latency, whereas best effort doesn't get any delivery guarantee. And then you have scavenger class, which is less than best effort. Maybe for your business, this could be social media type traffic or certain websites like Netflix and, and others that are super bandwidth hungry and they might bring your network to a crawl you what you do is you just proactively give those classes super low priority so they don't crush your network during times of congestion and the final step is step three you define qos policy for each class so as you can see on the right hand side when you're all done with step one and two, you may say, hey, ABC Corporation gets this network QoS policy. Voice traffic is an absolute priority. ERP system is critical priority. Manufacturing system is critical priority, whereas web surfing is not allowed during business hours. And you create a QoS policy. And what that means is you define different service levels of QoS for each class of traffic. And one thing I want you guys to keep in mind is QoS is a per hop behavior or PHB. What does that mean? Everything that we have talked about so far, each device in our network, each router, each switch must have quality of service configured on it for this policy to operate correctly. So let's say if you have a server that get, gets plugged into a switch, and then that switch plugs into another switch and then that switch plugs into a router and eventually it connects to the internet. That entire chain 
must have QoS configured. Every single hop along the way must have QoS configured. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Okay, that's the only way it's going to work is when everybody understands how the traffic must be treated when it arrives and that traffic sits into the queue at each hop. Now let's shift our attention to QoS tools and techniques. So the first one is classification and marking. That's the act of categorizing traffic into different classes. And then you put labels on each packet as it comes into the network. So case in point, I have this router at the bottom of the screen and we got these packets coming in. And what we'll do then is we'll categorize those packets or put labels on those packets. So as you can see, I've got blue, orange, yellow, green. And then once we do that, the next step is we'll define queues because that traffic, if the, if the incoming traffic is more than our outgoing capacity or, or the bandwidth, then the traffic is gonna have to sit in a queue. By default, routers and switches implement what's called FIFO queue, which stands for first in, first out queue. That's not really quality of service. That is just first come, first serve basis, if you will. Now, it's a good strategy when you go to a restaurant or you want to go watch a movie or when you go visit a particular store during Thanksgiving, all good. But FIFO is absolutely terrible way of dealing with traffic. So what we do is we use QoS, which allows us to create multiple queues for providing priority treatment. So on our router, we'll literally create different queues as I'm showing on the screen here. And then once those queues are created, we then look into shaping and policing. Now, shaping and policing is a strategy within QoS that allows us to throttle or rate limit traffic. So what does that mean? Let me show you through this animation. So we have these packets that are coming in, right? We labeled them or we colored them. Then we put them in queues and then they zoom through the queues. And then we decide based on our strategy, what we're going to do with each queue. So in this scenario, for example, the top queue, the blue one, as you can see, I'm allowing all the packets to go through. So this might be voice and the one below it might be our mission critical traffic, the orange one. And the one below that might be the best effort traffic, the yellow one. And then the green one might be the scavenger traffic, which is absolutely terrible traffic in our network. We don't want it and will severely limit it in ratio compared to the other packets that need priority on our network. And finally, we can employ a technique called congestion avoidance, and it's used to deal with packet loss. And the whole idea is we proactively discard some packets to begin with before filling our queue that ends up leading to congestion. So just kill those packets and don't even allow them to get into the queue. And the very final thing that I'm gonna wrap this entire section with is the end-to-end -end QoS view from a real world perspective. Now, end-to-end -end QoS means we have the enterprise QoS, which is our local area network, and then we have the service provider QoS, which is our wide area network or WAN. Combined together is what is end-to-end -end QoS. So in this example, to the left, we got campus. To the right, we got a branch. And for the campus to talk to the branch and vice versa, we have the service provider cloud in the middle. Now, how would you go about setting up QoS in this network? The first place where you would configure QoS is campus access. You would set up speed and duplex settings, classification and trust on IP, phone and access switch, multiple queues and switch ports, and priority queuing for VoIP. The next place where you would want to set up QoS is your campus distribution. Here you have layer three policing and marking, multiple queues and switch ports, priority queuing for VoIP, weighted random early detection with data queue for congestion avoidance. The third place where you want to set up your QoS is WAN Edge. You define your SLA or service level agreement here. You have classification and marking, LLQ or low latency queuing. You have link fragmentation and interleaving. Now, we didn't talk about link fragmentation and interleaving, 
but this is a blast from the past. It was more applicable to slow speed links in the past of frame relay and all that, where we used to do TCP header compression and VoIP header compression. That is no longer necessary in a high speed world, but it's still there if you wanna use it. And then you have weighted random early detection and shaping. Now the key concept that I want you to understand is when you have a service provider and you buy MPLS service from them, make sure that the quality of service that you have configured your, on your network will be honored through the service provider edge and core. For example, if you have eight classes of service within your LAN, but your service provider can only honor five classes of service, you're gonna have an issue because you're gonna have to somehow either map between eight to five classes or do something to avoid any packet drops through the provider cloud. So what I would suggest is make sure your LAN and your WAN QoS has the same number of classes, okay? And it's important that you talk to your service provider when you're initially buying MPLS service. It's a very important topic. And you would wanna do your capacity planning for different queues. You would assign a certain queue to voice versus data. You would wanna look at differentiated services through the backbone. You look at low latency queuing and you will look at once again, congestion avoidance through the provider core. And that is a wrap. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.